it through, Mullen bursting into the box, Josh Mullen, Mullen's ball across, it's turned in, it's Pittman who's got it, Livingston leads, now can they get the ball back in, O'Brien, the lead, and Livingston have the lead, man, the score, hit with my two Full-time whistle blows and David Hay celebrates. And the Livingston fans join in exultation. Livingston have the lead against Rangers. And they are certainly rising to a few occasions on their return to the top flight in Scotland. You're listening to Talk Livy, your go-to podcast for all Livy fans to hear the latest about the club and listen to after-match reaction from the manager and players. This week I'm joined by Ewan, but Callum sadly misses out. It's no sad. Yeah. Whatsoever, it's no sad. Makes we'll get, things we'll get this done quicker, in like right? 20 minutes. Yeah, exactly. The podcast will last an hour, but it'll take 20 minutes. <laughs> On this week's episode, we'll hear from Gary Holt and striker Lyndon Dykes as they give us post-match reaction after the defeat to Celtic. We then review the game with Celtic after a long afternoon in Glasgow. I was down at the stadium during the week to have a chat with Livy's new international star, Matty Sarkic. We talk Scotland again this week. We take a look at the two games just played, give our overall thoughts on the qualifying campaign and discuss the playoff draw. And finally, we preview the next game as we welcome Hamilton to Livingston. We give our predictions and top possible lineups for El Plastico. So first up, we face Celtic this week. Before we get into it, let's hear what Gary Holt had to say following the game. There was a lot of talk beforehand of um, have we made them angry? Have we made them doubly aware of how they're going to be at us? And I thought they were. I thought they were the movement, and that was really good. But I thought we were well in the game. And I know everyone will pick up the papers and, and look at it four 0 But sometimes when you come here and if they score the goals that they can score. You say fair enough, but I felt just the individual mistakes at times cost us in the game, and that's the the sticking bit for effort, commitment, and all the things that you look for. Team shape, being brave at times in possession. I thought we had that. I think at times we could have been braver, um, but you take the goals out of the game. They never, they never had too many times they cut us open and and bent one in for twenty yards or or, or scored the world class goals they score. It's. It's it's a sticking point for my keeper because he's he's done really well. He's made some good saves. He made the third one as well. He's made, he's made a what's great save with his face, which he has to do from time to time. It's went up there and no one's reacted to help him. That's that's the that's the, the ugly side of the game. That you've got to do. You've got to, you can't expect somebody else to do it. You've got to go and throw your body in front. And I felt just at times we get we switched off at the the crucial times. We've had a, I I judge myself in, in every game. Um, and my players as well, but we've had a spell of games where we've played Rangers twice, Celtic twice, Mother won't come out. So that's the top four teams in the league, as they were at the time. So we've competed in the games, we've been in the games, but the, the games like Hearts and Hibs who are in the bottom six with us, we've, we haven't lost them. And could have maybe have got something better out of the end games. So it's it's been a tough run of games for us with the injuries and that we've had, but. Um, we only gauge each individual game, and today is what we, we focused on. And for a, up to the, the first goal, I thought we were comfortable. I thought we'd stifled Celtic to uh, 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 an extent, and not getting cut open, not having too many shots and goal, forcing it wide, defending crosses. Because I said to the players, they're going to have possession. Very rarely teams come here and dictate the ball or how you the game plan. So don't make it easy for them. I don't think we did. But then the first goal happens, and it's. I think it could have been cut out, I think it could have been dealt with better. But I'll have to look back at it and then <coughs> you're up against it again and then one and a half time you're saying stay in the game then. Stay in the game and then the second goal comes for Browning in a shot which was going to hit a corner flyer hit hits John and it ends up in the net and you're thinking that wee bit of luck that you need, like we've had three before. 
Uh, you need a, you need a bit of luck when you come to these places, and I don't think we we had it today. I think there's a lot of positives. Like, big, big wind has been a positive. John Guthrie's been really excellent. The, the, the additions we've made have been good. We Robbie, Robbie Crawford's been brilliant. Um, big <laughs> matches came in. And he's got his international recognition through playing really well. And today was no different. I thought he made. I thought his handling was excellent. Didn't look flustered. He's made one wonder save with his face when he's he's had to as a keeper. And like I said, I think we've got to then help him. We've got to dig him out a hole there. He's he's, he's done his bit. And no disrespect, James Forrest hasn't got a header of ball in the net for it's dropping 20 yards out there. So we have to look at it, we have to to be brave on the, the situation. He might go, go and get hurt, and that's what we need. Then we heard from striker Lyndon Dykes, here's what he had to say. I think, like I said, I deserve to win, and um, I think we, can, we just kind of put, that to, put it to bed and look on to next week. Yeah, look, I'm, it's part of football. Um, I, play, I just get on with it to be honest but I think a couple of times there was a, foul, a couple of fouls on me but they get given fouls to them and but it didn't change didn't didn't lose the game just from that and I thought yeah, most of most of the tackles were fine and, and I think the worst one was Scott Brown at the end there I'm like, oh. yeah it's one of those type of player is it type of player he is and I got nothing against him after the game I shook his hand whatever I am I think in the first half I went for 50 and I got him one and then he got me one, so yeah, it's just whatever. Yeah, it was uh, made me happy, obviously. And obviously, it's my first season in the Premier League, so I think I've got a lot to prove on and a lot to work on. And, but obviously, obviously, it's just scoring against them such a good, good side, and obviously the boys winning. And it was a great feeling and it was great confidence. And it was always going to be tough when we come here, but. Um, on a personal side, I, I, I felt good, and um, after that game, it really helped me. Yeah, I mean, um, like I said, I've said a couple of things in, in the last few weeks, but I've actually sat down at home, and uh, I mean, my son's born in Scotland, um, my, my parents are Scottish, I don't really have any family who's born in Australia besides me and my sister. So I don't see why not that I, I could play for Scotland, to be honest. I, I watched them the other week and I thought they were brilliant. I've got a brilliant team. So if I ever got the opportunity, I mean, I'll, I'd love to play for Scotland. And, and uh, But that's another thing that I'm just putting my head down. And I'm not getting carried away with that kind of stuff. And, and I've still got to perform and show, to show teams and show other people that I'm, I'm good enough for a step up, maybe. Yeah, I think, obviously, when it all started, it's a lot of talk. And yeah. obviously, you just just kind of go on with the flow. and. But then I see, like, obviously, I've been watching Scotland and I see Shanks has got injured or pulled out. And I think they called up Brophy. And I think, oh, why can't, why can't I do this? And also I thought, I mean, I've lived here for a few years now. My parents were born here. I've got Scottish blood. I'm not just someone who's just rocked up in the country yeah, for the yeah. first time who's going to play. So I thought to myself, um, no, I could maybe... maybe um, try and make it a goal for myself to try and play for Scotland and um, I think they've got a fighting spirit when I watch them and I think I really hope they make the Euros from the qualifications and I think I would love to be a part of that if, if I ever got the opportunity of course but I think I can maybe give a little bit of a different option and just um, just kind of be a different option for Steve Clark and, but I'm not getting a carry away with that no, no. Just, I just want to I want to work on my, my game and I want to get back to 100% fit because obviously I've been injured with my ankle the last few weeks and today was the first day I felt really good with it in the game and I've trained all week so um, I'm putting my head down and I'm going to try to work hard to maybe get into one of the international squad. Yeah, after the game, uh, Julian asked for my after swap shirt so I mean, um, he's obviously a great player and we had a good battle out there I think uh, so why, why would I say no and um, after the game done I shook all their hands and they're all great lads I said to them that they're all good players and I said to Julian no worries so um, as well that's a little bit of a compliment as well but um, uh, hopefully next time uh, I get the better of it So into the game then long afternoon wasn't it? Yeah it was I mean I was quite satisfied at half time I thought we played quite well I thought we restricted Celtic in terms of kind of clear cut chances and we offered a little bit on the counter attack, but you know the second goal just absolutely kills the game. Yeah, the first goal, it's it's just an individual mistake again. 
Um, How often are we talking about them? I know it's it's so frustrating. Uh, Lamy doesn't look like he's got his feet sorted at mm. all. Um, and then Edward takes it finish. takes it really well. Yeah. Um, second goal is a big deflection, but I, get I actually I actually said during whilst it was during the game. I was like, right, who's going to hit the ball? Yeah. Because we were actually allowing them to just knock the ball across yeah. their 18-yard box. Yeah, we didn't get out. It was three or four times where someone could have just went and hit the ball. Yeah. Third goal. Last season, someone puts their head on that. Um, someone goes and attacks that ball when mm-hmm. it's in there. Mm-hmm. No letting it drop. You know, We were really slow to react for that one. And then the third one's just it's powder puff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's one of the afternoons. I think we all kind of called it that they were out to get a, a little bit of revenge after the last game, and they went out to, to yeah. sort of dominate us, and they did that. Um, and obviously, that 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 was our biggest defeat since returning to the Premiership. That's um, it's, we we haven't been hit for four. Yeah, I was trying to actually think back. I thought it was possibly the last time we conceded four was. Um, Championship season either at Rangers or Hibs. Right. Um, Couldn't confirm anybody that can confirm we, that. The season we got relegated, so so it's a while back since we've conceded four goals. But and is there a is there a, a confidence thing now? Then you know we've went. Is it, what's that six without a victory? If it one one and eleven. Yeah. Uh, is the is the confidence starting to go a little bit? Do you think? I know it's tough going to it's, Celtic Park. It's, if for anybody, it's tough. Never mind yeah. does. But is there maybe a confidence issue starting to creep in? There could be. Um, you could only really ask the players and the gaffer that. But um, one win and eleven, it doesn't sound good, does it? So, no. No. Um, and it's it's funny that that one win scheme against Celtic. It's yeah, I know just it's completely bizarre. peculiar. Eh? But um, nah, yesterday was just. As I say, I was quite content at half time. Because we'd kept ourselves in the game quite well and I think we did offer a little threat on the break. Um, I thought Lyndon was doing really well holding the ball up uh, up against Julian. I thought he was getting... Yeah. He was kind of getting the better of him in the first half. looked a bit back to his on, fitness again. Eh? The game wore on. Uh, Julian started to um, control that kind of duel, let's say. I, but I think, I think uh, if we're looking at the overall game, I think there was probably only one man of the match for us. Would you agree? The goalkeeper probably kept the score down. I thought I thought Stiv had a good game mm-hmm. before he was taken off. I think Stiv for these sort of games is really good because I always talk about how well he holds the ball. Mm-hmm. Like he wasn't he maybe playing a, a flash through ball or anything like that, but he just kept the ball. Yeah. Uh, but Matty, yeah, Matty pulled off a few really good saves. Um, kept the score down. F- yeah, to be honest, I mean, we only had two attempts at goal yeah I was looking <laughs> I, at the stats it was something um, like 76% possession 20 yeah, shots I mean, to two and what what was really I think the way we set up we basically set up 4 one four one. it yeah. looked like and a bit like what we'd done the last yeah, time yeah and we looked like we offered them the wide areas mm-hmm. and we played really really tight and narrow but the boy Frimpong he was a med yeah, for Celtic yesterday. I, think, I was really, really impressed by him. I was going to uh, say, I think every the, time he got the ball, he made something happen. The whole reaction on social media was that he was the the star man, even for, for our fans, and yeah. uh, they were all saying that it's probably up there with one of the best individual performances. He, kept, he actually kept sucking lot uh, Lawson and Taylor Sinclair inside, mm-hmm. but then going outside again, yeah. and he, just, he was just creating more space for him to go past. Yeah, and he was. And it looks like a bit of a bargain that now of three hundred thousand. So tell you what, if he continues to develop along those lines, Celtic will net twenty million easily for him. You, you, you obviously you mentioned Taylor Sinclair there. That was his debut yesterday. How how did you think he got he done? I thought he did all right in spells. Um, he's probably still. I mean, it was good for him to get ninety minutes under his belt. Yeah. It's probably the first ninety minutes he's had oh, aye. Uh, since last season. So, um, but it's one of those games you can't really. It's hard to it's judge. A, it's a difficult judge. Yeah. Um, he was up against, as I say, Christie and Frimpong yesterday, yeah. Yeah. which was a tough task when you've barely played oh, exactly. uh, in the last six, seven months. Yeah. So I think he did all right in spells, but uh, as I say, it's a difficult one to judge. Yeah, it's just, it's just obviously really frustrating. Like, as you say, the first goal's avoidable. And how often have we been saying that this on the podcast through, like, the last four or five weeks? individual errors are costing us goals and 
And it's something we really, we really need to learn from like last season. Individual mistakes were costing us. Yeah. But you get punished more in the, in the Premiership, and you'll get punished every time against a team like Celtic nah. and Rangers, and that's what's been happening. Yeah. Obviously, the runny fixtures hasn't been very kind to us, and that obviously comes on to the bigger runny fixtures we're, we're coming on to now. Ah. We discussed it a few weeks ago. I think it's a real, real big time for the season, a season defining. If, you look, if you look at the table, obviously, we've got Ross County, St Mirren. Am I right in saying we've got St Johnston in our uh, that as well? Yeah, we've got St Johnston in right. there, I think, yeah. But you look at the table now, that's a massive oh, yeah. run of games. Absolutely. That's a massive run of games we've got. Obviously, Hamilton next week. I'm normally the positive one yeah, on the podcast. Yeah. And but, you made a comment before we started. But I think Hamilton's, that's huge yeah. next week. What did you say before we recorded? Just want to get it on. I, I said if we lose that game at Hamilton we're in serious trouble no you said if we lose that game at Hamilton you think we might we'll get relegated I think we'll <laughs> just throw you under the bus there because you do it to me quite often absolute bus chuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no I think just the way results are going and the run of form like if we lose that game Hamilton are that team that are constantly in and thereabouts mm-hmm. they get ahead of us in the league I just think that gives them a massive boost that will give the St Johnsons, the St Mirrens, the Ross Counties. Yeah. You know, we're the favourites to get relegated and if we start falling behind mm-hmm. them. Yeah. I no, just think it's absolutely it, it'll get their tails up. Yeah. And, and um, obviously they're they're playing at the time of recording against Rangers and competing pretty well. They're currently only two one down. Yeah. Uh, and obviously Rangers gave us wasn't a doing in terms of scoreline but they, they totally dominated us nah. and it sounds like Hamilton are competing fairly well against Rangers yeah. um, so aye, it's, it's certainly a big game, uh, a big run of games and we'll come on and talk about that a bit later on I was down at the stadium again during the week this time it's on loan Aston Villa keeper Matty Sarkic under the spotlight Matty spoke to us about his time in Belgium, his move to Villa, his time at Livy so far and of course his thoughts after receiving international recognition for the first time last week. Let's hear what he had to say. So this week on Talk Livy I'm delighted to have on loan keeper Matty Sarkic with me. How are you doing Matty? I'm good, thank you, how are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thanks. So we'll just get right into it, so we'll go to the beginning of your career. What was it that got you into playing football originally? Um, well, I just love watching the sport and... Um I remember playing in the playground when I was younger yeah. in school and um, so I just started in a, in a small club yeah. back in London and then just kind of pushed on from there. Yeah, and you have a twin brother who plays down at Burton Albion as well, am I right in saying? Um, were you always the keeper in the back garden? Or yeah, did you, I was. I did was. you flat with being an outfield player as well? Um, <laughs> no, I started off as a keeper. Um, yeah. Well, I got pushed into going to, golf <laughs> to begin with but where I started off and... Um, Turned out to be pretty good at it, so um, we kind of had the spine, spine of the team, and the family had me. Yep. <laughs> um, my older brother was a centre back, and then right. my um, my twin brother is a striker. So Practice uh, formations in the exactly. back garden. So as we well. just go out, out to fields and just <laughs> leave my, my twin brother take on my older brother, and then try and finish against me. So yeah. yeah. Hey, so you and your brother came up to the youth academy, and they're like, how did you end up kind of getting to Belgium, basically? Well, um, my father's a diplomat. So um, we travelled quite a lot while we had to move about quite a lot and yeah. um, so um, we ended up moving from London to Brussels. Right, okay. And at the age of seven we um, went on trials to Anderlecht yeah. and um, so we got accepted there and just kind of went through the youth there. Yeah, you must have picked up a few different lingos along the way then if you were getting about. <laughs> yeah, to, uh, that was that was one of the, I wouldn't say issues, but that was one of the um, things we had to get over just... Um, the language going from English to French at a young age was yeah. pretty difficult. So we um, went from uh, to an English speaking school to a French speaking school. So that um, that helped, but it was well, it was a difficult transition. And Anderlecht, a well known club for developing young players, was there any sort of household names that you rubbed shoulders with in your time there? Yeah, so um, Yuri Tillemans, right. um, he was there, and then Charlie Masondo was at Chelsea. Right. Um, who else can I name? Uh, Lukaku. Yeah. Um, then Donka, would you? Yeah, yeah, he, he was there. Um, Dennis Pratt. Yeah. Um, he's at Leicester as well. So I think there's a few more still. Adnan Yanazai. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, quite quite a few. There was a good generation there, and the like. Yeah, and 
there was then the opportunity to come back to England when Villa came calling. What was the attraction in signing for Villa? Um, well, Villa in the Premier League at the time, you know, who doesn't want to come to the Premier League? Yeah. And um, I think 90% of all footballers want to come and play in England. Yeah. So um, yeah. that was, that was, that is my aim. Yeah. Um, to come play, to play in the Premier League. So, of course, uh, when I had the opportunity, I didn't, didn't take it. It's a big club as well, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, it's a massive club. It's a massive, massive club. club. And your time with Villa, you've kind of mainly been playing reserves under 23s. What would you say is the main difference that you found between that and first team football? Um, difficult question. With 23s, it's more about development. So, yeah. um, getting you ready to go and play men's football. Yeah. Um, it's something you have to go through, but you don't want to be stuck in for too long. So, um, you know, you you can make mis- you I think it's basically there to develop and make mistakes f- to get you ready to go and play men's football and then build your way up to eventually getting where you want to be. Yeah, is the intensity level as high? No, it's not, things? but, you know, it's a, it's a younger league, so, yeah. of course, it's not going to be as high. So, it's just, like I said, just preparing you to get into them men's football. Now, you made your professional debut during a loan spell at Wigan, am I right in saying FA Cup tie? Yes. Yeah. Um, what was that experience like for you, kind of making your full debut? Um, it was good. You know, it was my first loan, so um, it didn't go according to plan. I didn't get as yeah. many games as I wanted to, but, you know, whenever you go on a loan, you always learn something from it. So, um, so yeah, uh, I, didn't, I didn't play, but I did take some positives from it. And you've had another couple of loan spells as well, Stratford Town and Haven and Waterlooville. What were those experiences like for you in uh, regards to your development as a player? Um, well, Stratford, um, Stratford was different. It was, um, <laughs> it was um, you know, I think it's, it's something that I needed to do at the time. Um, I was at Villa and um, playing 23s wasn't really doing much for me at yeah. the time. And so um, I needed to go experience men's football. And since the transfer window was closed, that they were they were totally asking different environment fans right at the side exactly park, exactly you know? getting get abuse getting abuse you hear right everything don't you literally like two metres away from me <laughs> t- pulling on the net as well so so um, see so yeah, I was good experience and maybe toughen up um, yeah. that bit more so um, and it's helped me along the way interesting patches as well you would have yeah, yeah <laughs> you, know, you know pitches aren't going to be what they're like up here and, and, in, and in the high leagues in England so um, so one f- yeah, like I've said this before. It helps. It always helps you in the future when you've been to one um, one extreme. Yeah, and it helps you on. In the summer, you joined Livy on loan for the season. Was there any other interest in you? And what if so? What appealed about Livy? Um, well, I was on I was on a holiday when I got um, got the call that Livy was were interested. Right. And um, as soon as um, as soon as my agent told me that Livy were, were, were calling, I said, okay, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Playing the first division in, in Scotland's a good opportunity for me, so um, I said yes straight away. Yeah, and how have you found the standard in Scotland and have you enjoyed the competition between yourself and Ross Stewart for the number one jersey as well? Yeah, uh, 100%. Um, you know, I've said this before where when you have competition, it makes you sharper, it makes you yeah. want to do more, it pushes you and pushes the other keeper. Yeah. And it's healthy for the team and healthy for the people around you. And um, so, yeah, and the, and the competition is is what I expected. It was, yeah. uh, you know, a strong Scottish football, um, a lot of balls on top of you. And then you get the the, um, the, the really big clubs like Rangers and, 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 and Celtic. Um, Which you'll get to experience. Exactly. Uh, the old fun tomorrow. Playing really good football. So, um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I've really enjoyed it um, to now. Yeah, and there's always a lot of talk about the artificial pitches up here. Um, you want to come across them maybe as much down south. How have you found them to play on? Um, well, when I was back in Belgium, I um, played a lot on artificial pitches. Right, okay. So it didn't really trouble me that much. No. So I, f- I felt fine and adjusted. It's a constant them. debate up here, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I felt fine adjusting to it, so it's yeah. right. And you've recently been called up. In fact, you're just back from international duty with Montenegro. Yes. Uh, having played through the age groups, did it come as a surprise to be called up to the full squad? And how did you find it? Um, well, I was. It was in my in my thoughts when I came to Livy that okay, this could be my chance to get called you up. Kind of pushed towards that. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, when I got the call, um, I was buzzing. My whole family was buzzing. So. Yeah. Um, and I enjoyed it, you know, going to Wembley, 
uh, for my first time is yeah. something not many people can experience, especially when I was there. I've been down a couple of times myself, it's a brilliant stadium, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, especially when I was there when I was a lot younger and I saw and I witnessed the game when Montenegro played England and then yeah. to be there the next time was, um, was really good. So, um, so yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And you also made your, your debut uh, during the week as well uh, against Belarus, keeping a clean sheet as well. How proud the moment was that for you? Yeah, uh, really proud. Um, family was really happy. Um, so um, to keep a clean sheet on my debut, I don't think you can ask for more. And yeah. to get the win as well. So um, yeah, to end the, end the year off yeah. like that is, is, is really good. Yeah. And lastly, what are you hoping to achieve in your loan spell with Levy and kind of when you return to Villa as well? Um, I just want to do as much as I can for the for the club and and um, do my job really and keep the ball out the net and yeah. try and try and get <laughs> your this. objective is quite simple, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> um, you know, and f- and affect the players around me yeah. positively and um, try and get the team up as high on the table as possible. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for joining me today, Matt. I no know problem. you've been trading and whatnot, so it goes without saying. We wish you luck for the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Scotland completed yet another failed qualification campaign last week, but is there a glimmer of hope at the other end of the tunnel? With three wins in a row now, and after two successful results against Cyprus and Kazakhstan in the qualifying campaign, are we a bit more positive going into the playoffs in March? You and you come into your own here. Uh, I'm, I am a bit more positive, I think. Cyprus game, we... There was good, there was positives and negatives. I think in both games there was positives and negatives. I think, I said to you after, I think Clark's gradually starting to see his best 11. Yeah, he's stamping his own sort of picture um, on the team. I think Palmer, the last couple of games, has been a real positive. Definitely. I, I, yep. he, I thought he was excellent yep. in Cyprus in particular. In the second half, he came in, uh, came into the game a lot more against Kazakhstan. Um having Christie on that side I think that's almost nailed on yeah um, which obviously it gives question marks over the likes of Tierney and, yeah because you know, Robertson's going to play yeah um, so Tierney's <coughs> the question mark there but the way I see it is yeah we could try and fit Tierney in but Palmer is a natural right mm-hmm. back so yeah and he's played well so he's kind of He's in possession of the jerseys, the way I would see it, yeah. in that one. Is there an argument to put Tierney in the centre-back then? Obviously, we're Well, I mean, going at, we're considering going Scott context. McKenna is like watching a World War Two tanker turn, <laughs> um, I would, I'd quite happily stick Keaton do, Tierney do in know, the centre-half. The, the best part about the at half-time of the Kazakhstan game was we, we were obviously at the game um, and we decided to just... Search Scott, Scott McKenna's Scott name. McKenna on Twitter and there was some absolute hysterical tweets <laughs> <laughs> Scott McKenna, including the World War Tank. <laughs> so I'm glad you threw that one in there. Yeah. Um, other, other positive performances, I thought Cal McGregor was very good, um, kind of sitting. I thought Jack grew into the game, mm-hmm. in both games actually. Um, he's very disciplined, Jack. Which I think we've lacked in that say, sitting midfield. Do you, do you know? I think he brings a bit of Scott Brown about him to yeah. the Scotland side. Just messes it up a bit, breaks play up, and and I think he so- solidifies Scotland. We look I've better. I've said this to you for months with Scotland. Yeah. That I think we've missed that type of player. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, I can't see him retaining McTominay the jersey. Will play. McTominay will play. McTominay will play. Yeah. Um, and then McGinn. I mean, basically, we need that weak kid Shea. I uh, don't know if you've seen the video on yes. Scotland, right? We need that wee kid Shea to basically do the pep talks for the playoffs yeah. because he speaks to John McGinn once and he scores seven goals in six right. games, right? right? Yeah. So he needs to go to McKenna, why can't you defend? <laughs> he needs to go to David Marshall, why can't you keep the ball out of your net? He needs to go to Alec McBurney, why do you think you're a footballer? And then we'll win the World Cup. <laughs> so, we're, yeah. we're, well, we're going to the Euros. Euros then. first. We'll do the right. Euros first. Uh, no, but. I, I agree with you, there, there was positive and negatives on, on both games. I don't think we played particularly well in Cyprus. The, um, the thing that really frustrated me in the Cyprus game was Taylor and Forrest out that side. Now, I don't. I think our best left-hand side will be Robertson and Fraser. Fraser, right. Um, when everyone's fit and available. But they were the first half in particular, they were getting sucked inside constantly. Yeah. Yeah. and it came back to bite me because I kept saying James Forrest isn't intelligent enough to play on the <laughs> left hand side and he scored two goals playing there yesterday yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right but 
he, he kept coming inside and he was causing Taylor problems because Taylor had to cope with two folk mm-hmm. all, and there was always a spare man out that side. Yeah. Like that was a thing that was in the centre halves. And yeah, you know, I, I think the, uh, the thing that the thing that concerned me is that was Cyprus and we were probably fortunate in the game to come away with a win. A win's a win, yeah. but I feel like we were probably fortunate to, to get that win. Um, and that was against Cyprus. We mm. are going to be going into the playoffs playing against some good opposition. Maybe not Israel, I would fancy our chances over Israel, yeah. but we're going to be playing a Norway or a Serbia who are two good sides. Yeah. And if we play the way we did against Cyprus, they, they'll beat us. Ah. They, they'll beat us. The, the Kazakhstan game, I think, I don't think we played bad first half, but me and you said it. It's just a bit lethargic. Eh? Me and you said it as soon as he came out second half, the tempo was just... Oh, yeah. Uh, we just upped it a notch mm-hmm. and as soon as we got the equaliser there was absolutely zero doubt that yeah. we were going to go oh, and win the game because we I think, I think you're right. Ragged. I think you're right with the, the right hand side it, I think it, it showed specifically in that game we, 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 we used really, the right hand yeah, side a lot more in the second exactly, half exactly and we? Palmer was overlapping and getting in behind him all the time what a great the second done. goal for my, yeah. my man my man Nasey <laughs> I was waiting on this I was waiting my no, man Nasey leading no, the line listen up listen <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you that you know we, we had a bit I wouldn't call it an argument but a debate a few weeks ago regarding Naismith and, and I'll, I'll, I'll hold my hands up he was very good Yeah. Uh, and he, he gave us a bit more up front the thing you know? we I had a look at the programme in, in Cyprus right and you actually saw the caps mm-hmm. in their, you know for their country and the back four in particular that was Palmer's fourth cap yeah. in Cyprus Decky's first, which by the way, congrats to yeah, Decky making brilliant. his Scotland and, debut. And he was, and he he was, was decent. He was by far the better of the mm-hmm. two centre halves. McKenna's only had just over 10, and then Taylor, that was his second and yeah. third cap. So, yeah. But then you saw Naismith just stuck out on yeah. 49. Mm-hmm. Right, he's obviously now made his 50th, right? But it was that was the point I was trying to get across was that experience and you could hear them yeah. in the stands in Cyprus you could actually hear them on the park just dictating where folk were to go yeah. and we've really lacked that I think yeah I mean, like, like I say it, was, it wasn't an argument just a debate on, on whether he warranted the, the call up or not but 100% take on board that you know it's worked and, and he gave us a focal point that we've been lacking yeah. over the last sort of however many games he's he, very intelligent he gave us that point yeah. and he, he wins and he's very He's the type of he's player. Deceptive he's the day, type yeah. of player that if if you're playing at club level and you're the opposition fan, you, you hate absolutely him. hate him because he, he goes down quite easily. Yeah, wins five kicks. Fouls. Yeah, which is something that Scotland need. Right. Oh, it's just experience. Yeah. That's all it is yeah. at that level, and it's it was massive. But it, obviously, we've had the draw, and I fancy our chat. I fancy has beaten Israel. We've already beaten them at Hamden. Yeah. I think we're on a probably a slightly better place yeah oh yeah than we were when we played them last time I, th- I think I was I think if it, if you had to choose your semi-final opponent it would have been Israel or Bulgaria yeah wouldn't it yeah so so we've done quite well out of that and we, we all knew that it was going to be Serbia or Norway but we were kind of hoping that it was, that was 50-50 going to be. whether it was at home or not yeah uh, so that's kind of see my point with it is on from a UEFA point of view I think it's so Inconsider it to supporters. Oh, uh, yeah. Right, because yeah. you've got the Israel game on the Thursday night. Now, granted, you can go and book accommodation for Oslo or Belgrade, right? Free cancellation and all that. But you can't plan travel. No. Right? I actually was saying to my dad, I'll just fly to Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam because it's the biggest connecting airport in the world <laughs> and just hope for a flight the to size, Oslo uh, or yeah, Belgrade, yeah. right? And we're actually sitting going, the best option might be to drive. Yeah. Like, yeah. but it's so inconsiderate that you're giving the fans and the way I was saying to my dad when we were over in Cyprus is I'd never forgive myself if I miss Scotland missing <laughs> uh, yeah. qu- missing them qualify for a tournament mm-hmm. so I'm absolutely adamant I'm going Yeah. but you've got five days to sort tickets right and everything like that I just think it's it's, it's poorly planned it really it is. is I mean I was I was looking at the draw and, and it made me laugh because you know We've, we've came through this whole Nations League, we won the section, and our reward for winning the section is playing against a team that we thought we'd already knocked out. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and, how daft, and then you've got your, your other teams. The so, Group A so the other, Yeah, so the other teams that were in the, worth the draw, the possibilities that we were playing were Romania, Hungary, 
Romania or Hungary. Yeah. Uh, and they've ended up in pot A together. And Bulgaria. And Bulgaria. Bulga- all three of them are in pot A together. So they're basically getting an advantage... And they've no, they've never won their sections. I, yeah. I just don't understand. And then it. you look at the Republic of Ireland, the Northern Ireland, who finished bottom of their groups yeah. Yeah. in the Nations League, and they've got a playoff. Yeah, it's totally confusing to me. I'm, I'm looking at the rankings just now uh, between sort of the teams that we're going to be playing. So we are currently fifty third, if I'm right, in the world rankings. I know world rankings are a bit conceived a little bit, uh, but we are currently fifty third in the world rankings, if I'm correct. Um, Israel 89th so on the world rankings we should be beating Israel yeah the final away from home Serbia 33rd in the world and Norway are 45th so both those sides are above us in terms of the but FIFA they're not, rankings they're not far they're not far but away from home yeah I'm, I'm just not confident folk keep saying they'd fancy Norway rather than Serbia right and I think it's because of the atmosphere I think yeah Side totally. of things. I think Belgrade's quite an intimidating totally. place to go. But on a football perspective, I'd probably rather play Serbia, mm. I think. <laughs> it's, it's, a it's, a, it's a very, I think they're very much of a much it's list a, of two a, sides. A, I mean, you've got Norway who's got the boy Haaland. Haaland. You just pronounced it differently. It's the same thing. Well, you you, you added an E that's not there. <laughs> so Okay. Well, him, who's, <laughs> who's scoring for fun, so they've obviously got a threat up front. Josh Serbia's, King, Gale, Serbia's well. got um, Mitrovic, Mitrovic uh, who's obviously a, a dangerous player. And I'm just concerned that our defence, with McKenna in there, will no cope with either of them. Scott McKenna. <laughs> oh, honestly, like, he was... I I want to smoke what Derek McInnes is on. <laughs> <laughs> £10 million. Right, thinking he's worth £10 million. Pound. <laughs> honest to God. I said this last year, watching Craig Calcutt and him on the same pack, I was like, there's only one person yeah, I would value at the yeah, 10 million oh, quid like is talking about. 100%. Um, so let's put our necks on the line then. I know we're, we're months and months away and we'll probably discuss this later in the, so probably next year in one of the episodes. But let's put our neck on the line. Will Scotland qualify for the Euros? But now we have a leader. <laughs> His name is Stevie Clark. <laughs> He'll take us to the Euros. <laughs> Okay. The boys from Hamden Park. So is that? Allee, allee, allee. <laughs> allee, allee, allee. So you, you heard it for you, and he thinks we will be at the Euros. I'm not as convinced. Uh, sadly, I think we'll fail at the fall at the last hurdle. As usual, glorious failure for Scotland. But but Stevie Clark's going to turn it around. St- Stevie Clark's the Messiah. I believe in him. <laughs> Let's hope you're right. Finally this week we're going to preview our next game We welcome Hamilton Ackies to Livingston For the first time this season Looking to get our first win in six This is a must win isn't it? Oh yeah um, I think obviously we, we discussed it During the Celtic game a little bit there About our running fixtures And obviously you, you made your statement That I'm quite happy to bring up again Because you, you absolutely hounded me When we stopped recording <laughs> About you basically made me say <laughs> um, No, it, it's a must win for me. Um, at home against a competitor for the bottom sort of two or three spots, it's we've got to win. It's the proverbial six pointer. Yeah. You know, uh, we win the game, we stay above them, we lose, they jump ahead of us and I think you made a really good argument there just before starting to record that a team like Hamilton who are used to fighting at the bottom of the league, if they get ahead of us that's a massive boost for them. Gives them a bit of confidence going forward. So I think we need to kind of stop that in its tracks. Yeah. And and get get that gap again. Yeah, I think they're two points behind us. They did lose. They did lose three one today against Rangers. Um, so if we can win that, that extends the gap to to five points again. Um, so yeah, I would say it's a, a definite must win for us. Yeah, I think it's. There's something about Hamilton and uh, a Reed. I think they've got. They just. They have this knack of just producing something yeah. all the time. Mm-hmm. Like Hamilton don't have form. They never have form. No. Right? Or they've gone so many games without defeat. Or they just pull a win mm-hmm. out of nothing. Yeah. And I think this is what what we need to do. Yeah. Right. right now. Out, we yeah. just need to pull a win out from somewhere. Yeah, a ball and get hitting off of somebody's ass going into the yeah, net, something. We yeah. ju- we just desperately need that. And Hamilton are <laughs> 
the role models for that, mm. yeah. <laughs> that style. Michael Stewart always says they're predictably unpredictable yeah. Yeah, yeah. on sports scene and that. And we we desperately need a Hamilton style result. Yeah, without a doubt. I think the thing that's given me hope as well that if, if I'm right, uh, and I've done the research right, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, and you and you're quite good with these stats. Um, our last defeat to Hamilton at home was way back in April 2013. Stephen May hat trick. Yeah, so so that that's kind of on our side a little bit. The record at home, it's it's quite funny because obviously the five Premier League games we've played against each other now, there's been two wins each and a draw, and the home sides came out on top except for the draw when it was at Hamilton. I think we drew three three. Yeah. Um, but the home teams generally came out on top. So yeah. this is a fixture that home teams generally dominated over the last few years. Yeah. So that that kind of gives me hope, isn't it? I don't. I don't see it being an open, expansive game. I think it'll be very cagey. Yeah, I like like every Hamilton game. I think yeah. every time we go into it, we're just concerned how the game's going to go because nah. every time it's a similar pattern to the game. You know, we we're kind of in control of the game without creating very much, and then they'll hit us on the break. That's generally how it's been yeah. going. Um, so we need we really need to guard against that um, because even a point stops that run of defeats. Yeah. Do I want a point? No, I want us to win. I think we're, we're good enough to win and that'll get that sort of well, think, off our back. But you know the the statement you forced me into saying earlier, <laughs> right? I think we are more than capable of staying up, to clarify. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think I've said this all season, I think a lot of the teams in the league are much of a much less. There's nothing oh, yeah. between the sides. Yep. But I just think it's that confidence thing. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Quite clearly lacking in it just now. And yeah. we just, as I say, I feel like if we get a win, that'll yeah. stop, it'll just stop the rot and I think we'll go on and get a few results and in the bounce and then then nobody's even exactly. thinking about it again. Exactly, and it's that, that's exactly, you're exactly right, the league is that tight that a couple of wins in a row and you're thinking about top six again. Yeah. You're not even well, considering. Well, look at Hibs, look yeah. at Hibs. They've exactly. won two games in the bounce and they're now in the top six yep. and they're not even, Hibs aren't even talking about yep. Being in the bottom half of the table, it's now. amazing how things can turn. You know, it, it's so it's it's literally a case we just need a result yep. to go in our favour, and I think we'll then start picking up, picking up. Yeah. But I just think this game's a massive, massive opportunity to get back on track. Yeah, for us. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at the last five Hamilton away matches, so they're they're generally in the game. Um, Take out the, the, the trip to Ibrox where they got a bit of doing, they got beat 5 0. They've drawn 2 2 at Kilmarnock, they lost 3 2 at St Johnston, drew 0 0 at St Mirren, and drew 2 2 with Hearts. So they're generally in the games away from home. Yeah. So we need to, and they're scoring goals. Nah. So we need to guard well, against that. I said this last season, I think under Reid, they're a better, they're a, they're a bigger threat, Hamilton, mm-hmm. than they were under Canning. Yeah. Like they, they offer a bit more going forward, I think. You know, Reid worked with Yogi and he likes to play his free flow in football. You know? <laughs> How's it? What, uh, when did they turn into Sean Connery? Jeez. <laughs> 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 um, but I think Reid has very much that philosophy as well mm-hmm. and he wants to have his team have a bit more of a go at teams. And yeah, yeah. As you just kind of pointed out, that they're, they're scoring a yeah. few more goals than yeah. they were before. But I do think Hamilton are looser at the back right, yeah. as a result of that. Yeah. A bit like us this mm-hmm. season. We're better going forward, but I think we give opportunities away at the yeah. back. No, there's a, a definite comparison between the two sides. Um, I noticed today that Hamilton didn't start Oakley, who's been their focal point for most of the season. Yeah. I'm wondering if that's a tactical decision that they're, they're, they're eyeing this game rather than the, the game against Rangers. But he doesn't concern me. The, the, the guy that concerns me, and I think we've spoke about this uh, a few times when we've played Hamilton... And, yeah, and you're gonna. I'm glad you've pronounced his name. I thought you were gonna make it. <laughs> yeah, but the big number ninety nine, he's constantly <laughs> caused us problems. You say like such an old man. Aye, the big, the big ninety, <laughs> the, the boy with ninety nine. <laughs> uh, what's his name? Aye, Ockenpo. It's a good effort. Um, he's caused us numerous problems over the last sort of season and a half. Um, so he's certainly one that. I'd be concerned about uh, bullying our defenders who are struggling a little bit just now. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Stubbs wasn't playing today. It was he suspended for Hamilton. Uh, potentially he'll come back in, but I know he was a big player for Hamilton so early in the season no. defensively. So he's one that to look out for as well. 
Um, but that's Hamilton. So what about us then? Obviously, we've still got a, an injury list about the length of my I arm. mean, um, uh, yeah, I, I was genuinely surprised when named seven subs yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I was actually quite surprised. But for me, London's still no 100%. Right. I still don't think he's quite there. Mm-hmm. Um, but you've got another week's break. You're hoping that guys are, are back fit. And Robinson never featured again. You obviously mentioned a few weeks ago that it was it was an illness. Well, what a, what a read or kind of seen that was an illness rather yeah. than mm. uh, an actual injury. But the thing is, we named seven subs yesterday, but how many of them are actually exactly. going to feature at all? Yeah, because um, yeah. I was the same when I saw the lineup. I was like, oh, we've got a full squad here. And uh, then my second thought was, half of them on the bench are probably no fit to come on. Yeah, uh, and I think that kind of told because you would expect. If Robinson was fit, yeah, he would be one to come on. Ah. Um, so potential lineups then without so, you know, we don't know the injury situation. Yeah. So potential lineups then would you change anything? I think the back four's basically picking itself. Just with injuries. Yeah. Just now with mm-hmm. injuries, I think, a uh, Dolphins the backup and. Taylor Sinclair's a natural left back so probably go in there again mm-hmm. and as I said it's good that he's got 90 minutes under his belt Yeah. Um, I think Bartley plays Crawford plays Pitts plays yep. Wallace plays I think your other position is it a game for Suda? I, t- I actually I would like to see Tiffany coming in for this one now, Suda played against Hamilton earlier in the season and I thought he was Pretty ineffective, to be perfectly honest. Did sell a goal. He has that little bit of quality. Yeah, yeah, but I games, think but I think Tiffany has showed in his two or three games that he's played recently yeah. that he's got a bit about him that he yeah. could cause problems. And the thing is, Hamilton will be compact. They like to give the ball to the opposition and hit on the break a little yeah. bit more. Um, so it's our job to open them up, and I think we need to get the ball wide so Tiffany can can run at players wide Lawless has obviously been one of your star star guys yeah. on the other side to me that's how we we'll open them up getting the ball wide getting players running at defenders yeah. getting balls in the box for the that's what I'm saying teams. about Suda Suda likes to run with the ball Does, as well it's... I, 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 the, the thing is with Suda though I think he got he got shown up defensively again at Hamilton he, yeah. did, he did make a few runs back but again to me he still caught out a few times yeah. whereas I think Tiffany didn't yeah you know, so, and we called it at the time. Tiffany came on in that game for Stobbs. The first thing he done was got in behind. Yeah. So that's kind of what's making me go towards that. Yeah. No, I agree. I think it's one of those games where we need to, instead of trying to be so focused on what Hamilton can do to us, we need to focus yeah. on how we can affect Hamilton. Yeah, definitely. I think that's the mistake we've made. Yeah. Especially going to Hamilton, but thought too much about them Aye. and not what we're good at. Stick to what we're good at. We've got the players more than capable of opening them up and winning in. the game. So, predictions. Callum's not here and I didn't have his prediction, which now, would suit him. Now, speaking of Callum Brown <laughs> and his predictions. It wasn't happy, eh? Uh, Callum Brown predicted 4-1 on yeah. the podcast last By the week. way, I'll hold my hands up. I've I done a little uh, picture saying 3-1. So, I'll hold my hands right. up. That was my but mistake. But Callum Brown was sitting next to me at Celtic Park yesterday and goes, when the fourth goal went in, he goes, yes, three points, three <laughs> points, right? Because I hadn't seen what you'd put up on yeah, Twitter. Yeah. And I updated the league table to include him getting three points. Yeah. When actually, he predicted 4-1. Yeah, cheat, right? Callum, cheat. So Callum, Callum has been docked 14 points. <laughs> so all of his points. And, and I got uh, his spot on. You I actually got, got it spot on. I was rate by rate. That was the thing that actually was just not the stuff out of me <laughs> yesterday because I went and updated the league table at 3 0 because I thought, I've got this. <laughs> and, school and, boy. Then, and then Forrest got through for the fourth. I was like, school, <laughs> school boy <error. laughs> School boy um, So Callum's not here to predict the outcome of the game, but we'll get We'll do his prediction for him. Yeah. So he's predicting 7 6 <laughs> to yeah. Livingston. What, what are you thinking for the game? Um. Uh, Take your time. I'm gonna go two one, Livy. <sighs> I was gonna go two one. <laughs> I don't think we'll keep a clean sheet. Mm, so. Stay not right. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go two nil, then, Livy. 
and go for a Ka- Callum Brown's going seven six. <laughs> we've also uh, for the game we've got two tickets to give away. Um, we've not really fought a competition for that yet. We're we're kind of recording it on the the wing. Yeah, prayer here a little bit. Um, so we'll think about it and pop it onto Twitter and Facebook and let you get in touch. We're, re- we're always really organised for these <laughs> things. <laughs> uh. but, but the main thing is we've got two tickets for the Hamilton game to give away, uh, so keep a look out on our socials on how you can win them. And uh, yeah, hopefully we see you at Livingston for the game and hopefully we get back to winning ways. So that's it for another episode of Talk Livy. Thanks to everyone who continues to listen and support the podcast. To Matty Sakic for coming on to the podcast and having a chat with us. And the club for helping us get that interview sorted. You can find Talk Livy on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter by searching for Talk Livy. Hit like and follow to keep up to date with everything we're doing. You can also find this episode and all of our other episodes on all good podcast streaming sites including iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud plus many more. All our episodes are also on our website, talklivypodcast.libsyn.com. So go give us a listen, and if you like, leave a review. All your feedback's always welcome, good or bad. Uh, And so from Andy and myself, thanks for listening to Talk Livy. We'll be back again next week. Hopefully Cam can actually be bothered to show his face. (laughs) Um, He's probably, he's in shame after he's, you know, cheating, blatant cheating. He is the Scott Allen of this podcast. (laughs) Um, But yeah, thanks very much for listening and tune in next week. Come on!